Oh Lord, you deceived me. Oh Lord, you done me wrong. I've been out here serving faithfully. Seems you've left me all alone. So I said, I'll not speak or mention your name at all. But your word is like a fire burning in my bones. I can't quit when there's a fire burning in my soul. Sometimes I want to lay it down, but it gives me strength to carry on. I know while on this battlefield, sometimes we'll face defeat, but I can't quit when there's a fire burning in me. So many are quitting, they're laying down the sword. They've grown weary in this battle, we are fighting for our Lord. But when I think of what he It sounded like it was high. It felt like it was high. Well, yeah. I got it. Yeah, man. 319. When we not know. <laughs> when the redeemed are dead.
Everybody got a song. Just a moment. Too fast. Too fast, come on. You'd be too cold. <laughs> I don't ever want to come up here and stand and not thank God for saving my unworthy soul. Thank you for all his many blessings, his healing touches, and just everyday things that he does that I don't even realize he does for me. And I just give him the praise and honor tonight. And I wish I could say I was as good to him as he is to me, but I can't. But I, I do want to stand and praise him and thank him tonight for all he's done for me. That's true. If I could telephone heaven and talk to a loved one up there, I'm sure they would tell of the beauty that surrounds them in that land so fair. Perhaps they would talk of a river that flows to that lovely land. I'm sure they would bid me to join them. So once again, hand in hand, everything here is eternal, each view is a wonderful sight, the sun here is always shining, in this land there is no night, there's splendor in all directions, everywhere your eyes will see. And contentment forever You'll never long elsewhere to be If I could telephone heaven And talk to a loved one today I don't want to go back there I believe I would hear them say For Jesus is all that I need here Every need has been 
cursing, there's nothing when he washed all the tears from my eyes. Everything here is eternal. Each view is a wonderful sight. The sun here is always shining. In this land there is no night. There's splendor in all directions. Everywhere your eyes will see. Peace and contentment forever. You'll never long elsewhere to be. Peace and contentment forever. You'll never long elsewhere to be. I want to thank the Lord for what he does for us, too. I had Mary Grace anointed two months ago for her stomach issues, and she's had no problems. And I thank the Lord for being with Noah, being in school. He's kept him safe off his COVID and the teachers and with us being at work because it's all around us. Jesus told his disciples of things to come. He would be persecuted, beaten and mauled. The Son of Man would die on the cross, but he wouldn't say dead. So it's a blessing, even when no matter how bad it hurts, no matter how bad it gets. But he's 
at the time, but it pays off. Anybody else? The wind was blowing. I had <clears throat> had a rehab in Galax. I just a mutter about the wind blowing. It just come to me. I told Janet. I said I would be thanking the Lord. It's 42 degrees. Could be 22 in the wind blowing. So uh, it's always uh, it's what our brother preacher said about it. when he had a flat tire. Praise God. Three of them was up. It wasn't but one flat. Yeah, so that, uh, yeah, Mickey knows that fella, <laughs> yeah, there's always something to praise God about, amen. amen, when it all looks like it's down and things not going good, uh, pray for our churches, I know several that's closed down for a week or two, so pray for them, we did get some news there from Eddie Bailey. Maybe he's doing a little bit better, but things is looking a little bit better, eating a little bit. Praise God for that. Uh, Wayne and Louise, remember them? God knows their need. Uh, Krista Jones called and said she's had some stomach problems this week. Pray for her. And, uh, J Justin's babies, I think maybe the little one's got the flu or it ain't Corona, so don't get yeah, don't get a. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that was a little one, right? Yeah. yeah. The little one's got the flu, so it, that's serious. Pray for them. Pray for them. Larry, she got a form of leukemia, or I don't know, back and forth. Who did you say? Larry Key. Larry. Yeah. Cause he he's had that or something similar for a while, right? Yeah, he, he's had blood disorders. Yeah. Something in his lungs, but he's down there for about like Larry was there for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Old Don Anderson too. I I don't know. Uh, as far as I know, still in the hospital, but pray for him. And, uh, he's had pneumonia, corona, and now he's had two heart valves replaced and another one repaired. And, uh, he's went downhill. Eldridge World, remember old Eldridge. Uh, God knows. Boy, he's been good to us. You know what? We're able to be here. Praise the Lord. He's been good to us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I remember that. I saw that on Facebook earlier, and I thought they were just showing a picture of Casey, but old Casey passed away. How old was he, 60? 62. Uh, 52. 52, 62, 62. I thought how, how that family has uh, took care of old Casey. Uh, Dad died a long time ago. And Mom been dead a good while, and that family has just took care of Casey. Used to come to church with us. Roger would bring him some to church. In case you loved everybody. That's one of them you pretty well sure they made it home. Pretty well sure. I see the old boy with a new body. He never had much, much health or body here, but praise God. Praise God. Working outside in his hand, and it's just making it worse. And so I was in the kitchen, and maybe a pencil ate 
Amen. Amen. I pray that I can get off some of this blood thinner and I can get my eyes operated on. Just a little bit of help would help. <laughs> Amen, Janet. I scare myself, so. Uh. I thank God for the number that's out. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Did he get in? Did he get in the hospital? We better take every opportunity we got. <laughs> so, and our kids are listening. Our kids are listening. This lady told me today on Galax that her old granddaughter got a new dog and, and it just liked a special kind of food and they got they couldn't get that kind of food. And she just a little, I don't know, four. I don't know exact age. She told him, she said, that Joe Biden said he's going to mess up everything. So he <laughs> said, said, you can't get no food, he's going to change it. So our kids are listening. <laughs> they're listening to what they're saying. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, definitely heard somebody say that. And it wasn't on TV, it had to be somewhere else. It wasn't on TV. Great. Amen. Amen. And you didn't do no sanding on it? Well, yeah. Amen. And you didn't do no sanding on it? Well, yeah. And you didn't do no sanding on it? Well, yeah. And you didn't do no sanding on it? Well, yeah. And you didn't do no sanding on it? Well, yeah. And you didn't do no sanding on it? Well, yeah. And you didn't do no sanding on it? Well, yeah. I'd uh, <laughs> get a haircut today, and I don't wear my hearing aids. I'm afraid they'll cut my wires and who think it's a white hair. I'd lay them out. And they was talking to me, and I said, I can't hear you. <laughs> she said, you want me to tell you again? I said, yeah, twice more. I'd appreciate it. So she quit what she was doing. She came over. And she said, <laughs> she said, I don't want to tell you. They're preaching. About bad as I am. So the lady and her husband had separated from the church and she raised up and testified and she said, It's my fault. It's my fault that we're separated. And I won't admit it. And, uh, and she said she had another friend. You know how all that goes. She said she had a friend and uh, she wanted him to pray for him. And he said, Okay, we'll pray that y'all get back together. She said, no, 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 that ain't the prayer I want. <laughs> she didn't want to get back with her husband. So if I don't get everything exactly right, <laughs> God forgive me. I try. I am going to pray that they get back together. <laughs> Bless.
that ain't the only deaf one, the only one that can't see, the only one that's getting old. I ain't praising the Lord like I need to. Anybody else got a prayer request? Yeah, Tommy Lynn. Remember, she's still sick. Well, I ain't got no dogs at my house. Hello. Hello. You can't get that nice for a while. My last buddy died. I said, we're done. Don't need nothing else. Take care of it. We've hashed over. Several has asked over Christmas dinner and the way everything's looking now. I'll give you my opinion. Y'all can tell me what you think. But we may be better off to just call it off and uh, let it go. But I ain't going to eat Thanksgiving dinner with my window up either. I'm going to close my windows. <laughs> if it stays this cold, that's what they recommended on TV. I watched the right smarter TV today. Ain't no wonder people's crazy. <laughs> if you watch TV long, you don't know your left hand from your right. And the weather either. Amen. I don't mind saying amen. Anybody else want to pray? Got a doctor's appointment tomorrow. Check up physical, I guess, old age check up. I've dodged them for a year and a half. Get you concerned when you can't see. It'll get you concerned. When they have games, the guy still runs hurdle every year. He has to get his wheel back checked. He's been three years cancer free, so let's pray that it stays that way. Amen. Remember, James. You've been a blessing to me when they just say that. There just ain't no way he made a move. James made a move for the glory of God. We watched him grow. Imagine two hours being still my age, much less his. Yeah. I like to went nuts for wires when they told me I couldn't move from the hospital. Golly. I moved. <laughs> Amen. Praise the 
seven years, but not knowing that he's right with God. And remembering the times that tried to pray with him wouldn't make it. To me, that's reality. It's heaven or hell. Yeah. Sometimes it's harder to talk to family than anybody else. We need to let our people know we're ready. Wait, they ask you to tell them. You can't ask them. We need to know. It's serious. Once that old body's dead, there ain't no asking. There ain't no coming back and getting it fixed. We need to be serious. We need to be serious. I've not heard from Dale. Did you, Dale, fast?
field. I want to apologize. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, I didn't know he had gay pride on his car, and I didn't know that. And uh, that's when I brought his shirt with me. That's Jimmy Johnson's shirt. I didn't know he had gay pride on his car. Mm -hmm. You know what I think about that, don't you? I didn't know. I seen it on the news. I was watching the weather, and he had gay pride on his car this year. I didn't know it. Same way I feel about it. Same way I feel about it. Amen. You know, Channel 12 News, I felt like it's about it. If Biden perhaps wants to get it, I don't believe he got it legally, but I'm going to pray for him. I've got to tell you. He's asking, I tell him I don't need to. <laughs> I'd like to see him get saved. Anybody else want to pray? Remington has appointment at Baptist on Monday morning, so remember that. <laughs> I said Remington has an appointment at Baptist on Monday morning, so remember that. Amen. Remember Remington.
praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. I had three or four messages. <coughs> we need to get home tonight, so let's, let's go with one of them. And it'll be short. Turn over to Luke. Uh, no, let's go to James. Let's go to James. Amen. Fourth chapter of James, very, very familiar scripture. I thought a few weeks, maybe a few months ago, uh, I was worrying about how simple I am and how ignorant and dumb I am, and I was worried about it, talking to the Lord about it. And the Lord knows I just want to, I just want to preach what the way He wants me to preach, and, and you know, I just got to preach like I am. I can't be like nobody else, and I can't go with a doctor's degree or education. I don't have it. I just got to preach just what God's given me. And I'm tickled to death with what God's given me. And if you could have known me before and known where I was at before, you'd be tickled to death with what God's given me. This is just plain, just plain scripture that we've all heard before. But I'm afraid sometimes we try to get above our raisin and. Try to tell something we don't even understand ourselves. Uh, let's let's go. Uh, might read <clears throat> three or four verses of the third chapter of, of James, and maybe not go through the whole fourth. Everybody found it. Thirteenth verse of the third chapter of James, and he said, "Who is a wise man endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his work with meekness of wisdom." But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Fifteenth <clears throat> verse, and he said, that This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly and sensual. So he's saying there plainly that if we have bitter and envying and strife in our heart, that, that it's, it's not of God. It don't come from heaven. It comes, it's earthly. He said, in the 15th verse again, And the wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion, and every evil work. And we might stop there just a minute, but uh, uh, God's not the author of confusion. We know uh, that Satan is the author of confusion. And we can look at our land today and see the confusion, confusion in everybody's heart. And I thought about uh, even if you talk to nurses or to doctors or, or anybody you talk to in a high, high degree, and uh, even our court system is supposed to be uh, some of our smartest people, and uh, there's confusion. They don't know which way to go, and they're changing rules continuously. And uh, I talked to an insurance man there today, and, and I said, I'm not trying to beat you, but uh, I said, they told me I had the money in my hand, and they said uh, that this, this was wavered, that my copay was wavered. And I said, there in front of him, I said, praise the Lord. You know, I've saved $40. And I said, now you send me a bill for it. So they don't know. Those people that are sitting there sending you bills, they don't even know what the rules is. And he said, well, go to the Internet and pull up so-and-so. And I said, man, I, I'm of the old school. I don't understand. I don't understand how to pull up and to see. And Janet called Audrey, and it was on there. But that, that don't do me no good to be on Facebook or, or Internet or uh, email, it don't do me no good to be on email when the people that are nurses and are sitting at the doctor's office don't even know the rules. So what we're saying is the confusion that it's brought. And, you know, I'll pay it. I guess I owe it. Amen. They, they said I did. They said I didn't. They say I did. But I guess I can pay $40. Probably won't break me. But what I'm talking about, it causes confusion. If I've told you I'm going to give you this and come and take it back, Indian giver, 
Amen. That causes confusion, in it? it causes confusion. If I tell you I am something and I'm going to be, I'm going to be it and I'm going to stand and I'm not going to back down. We've seen them sing in the choir that said we'll never walk away, we'll never fail, we're going to finish this race. It don't make no difference which comes. And if I stand here and tell you I'll never fall, I'll probably be lying to you. I'll fail along the way. And it brings confusion into the people's hearts when they see one that has testified how God has took alcohol out of their life and they see him sitting back on a bar stool. And all this confusion is of Satan and it's, it's been continuing and so many say that they are children of God, amen, and their name's not written in the Lamb's book of life. I'm not the judge, but glory to God, if your name's in the Lamb's book of life and you know it's in there, you're going to live for God. You're not going to play around, amen. There's not going to be in confusion in your life. And that's not saying that you ain't going to stumble and fall and have some hardships. But God didn't give me the right to stand and cuss my neighbor. God didn't give me the right to treat my neighbor worse than I want to be treated myself. God didn't give me a right to cheat people. I don't care who they are, how sorry they are for laying in a ditch. God didn't want me to be a respectful person because he said he wasn't. And it causes confusion if I like this one better than I do that. And that's what we find in the churches. We just need a simple love, glory to God, where we love everybody. How we can say amen to the word of God no matter who's preaching. Amen. And we can shake hands with everybody. Everybody, instead of having uh, to pick our little few that we can lift up and holler and shout and carry on, uh, glory to God, or a few preachers that we can go listen to and others that we just shut off. Amen. We need to love our neighbor as ourselves. That's what the Word of God said. So there ain't no wonder that our children are in confusion today. Ain't no wonder uh, our children are hearing uh, that uh, Joe Biden, amen, is going to mess up everything. He's going to change everything. And that's just... That on the general is our conversation, amen. Uh, we're not praising God, not giving God honor and glory. But he said the confusion is, is an evil work. But he said the wisdom that is from above is first pure. And then he it says it's peaceable. Can I tell you something today? Glory to God, the wisdom that comes from God, there's some peace in it. And I'm going to tell you, there's a devil in confusion on every side trying to stop the peace that God has sent down to give us. And I find it in the churches. I, I mean, uh, Sister there was talking about it earlier. I tried to watch last Wednesday night service uh, from the uh, motel room or the cabin room up there, and, and I could not keep my mind on it. I'm just not smart enough uh, to keep my mind on it. My mind wanders. I have enough trouble in church. Amen. Butch must too. Amen. To have some trouble in church glory to God, of listening to what everyone is saying and to hear what all is said. And we're all just alike. Amen. So I, I laid there and I wanted to back Lamont. I wanted to listen to Lamont. I wanted our church. I wanted our church to grow. And I, surely y'all ain't as bad as I am, but I just had trouble uh, of sticking with it. Amen. Because I was moving. I, I laid down in the bed. I thought I, I'll turn all the lights off. I won't have nothing, no bright lights to bother me. And I'll lay there and listen, but I just have problems. And I praise God for it going out over the Internet and over the, the Facebook. But can I tell you something I really praise God for, brother? Amen. It's church. I praise God that God give us church. Can I tell you who the devil's mad at? He's mad at the church. He wants to tear down the church. Can I tell you who that hypocrite's fighting against? He's fighting against the church. Can I tell you who that a law officer that don't love God is against? He's against the church. Are they against the church people? Are they don't like us, glory to God. They don't like our testimony. They don't like the stand that we take, amen. And they don't even like it because we're just simple people, amen. They live a simple life and glorify a simple God, amen. I, I believe God is just a simple God, amen, that understands exactly what I am. He understands exactly uh, that I don't have much education. He understands when I love him, and I believe he understands when I'm working again. Against him. I believe he knows, glory to God, my name. I believe he knows when I'm going to die. He knows when I was born. He knew what I was going to be. I believe he looked down on me in them old drunken stupor days and he said, Father, give him one more change. I believe he'll serve us one of these days. I believe God knew that, but can I tell you something? I wasn't predestinated. I, I had to make a choice, glory to God, that I wanted Jesus. He knew what I was going to be, but I had to make a choice as he visited my house, as he spoke to my 
my heart, as he convicted my heart, as he spoke to me as a little boy, on up through the, the, the teenage years, even after I was married, when God spoke to me and I said no and walked away, I'm glad that God knew what I was going to do. And Jesus was the intercessor, said, let's give him one more change. How many times has God given us one more change, honey? I'm talking about even after we're saved, has God given us one more change to come back to him and to praise him and to give him honor and to glorify him for what he's done for us. It's so easy to forget to praise God. It's so easy to hold back our testimony when we get an opportunity. Brother Paul prayed that God would open a door for him that he could testify or say something about Jesus, how great God is in our lives. Well, let's look what the Word of God said. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure and it's peaceable and it's gentle. Can I tell you something today? Christians are not gentle today. Christians are, are backbiters. Christians are fighters. Christians cause trouble today. Those that have been born again have forgot what God brought them out of. Today, only our church should be sitting full today. Corona or no corona, the church should be sitting full today. Jesus Christ died on the cross in hard times for you and I. Amen. He suffered persecution for you and I. Amen. And what have we done for him? What have we done for him? I've had my jaw slapped and I've been hit on the head and been spit at, glory to God. But what have I done for Jesus? What have I done for Jesus? I've been cussed. Amen. I've been made fun of as a Christian. I told my son to, uh, this, this week, I guess. Yeah. I said, I've heard all I want to hear from you about me being a Christian. I said, I know what I am, and it don't matter to me what you think of me. And it don't. He can say a, a Christian wouldn't do this or a Christian wouldn't do that. A Christian can't forgive but so many times. Jesus went into the temple, turned the tables upside down, and whipped them, run them out of the temple, glory to God. I told my mama, my mama, my mama Janet right there, I said, we've put up with enough, it's time, glory to God, that we take a stand on the word of God. It's time we quit get being run over as Christians and knocked down and people talk about us and talk about how sorry we are and this is a Christian and that's a Christian. You can't judge me by that and it went back to the bar too. You can't judge me by that and it quit. Glory to God. Glory to God. How about me? How about me? I'm trying my best to serve God. I want to serve God. It don't matter if I'm sick or if I don't feel good or if I ain't got the money. If I'm tired, amen, if my nose is running. I want to serve God. Jesus died on the cross that I could be set free. Can I tell you something? I don't have to die and go to hell. Ramsey, I need to be shouting the house down if nobody ever says amen again. I need to be praising God for what he's done at my house. I don't have to die and go to hell. Amen. I'm a winner either way. I need to praise God. Look what the Word of God said. I like this. He said, gentle and easy to be entreated. Easy, easy to handle. Easy to be entreated. E easy to handle it. Full of mercy and good fruits. Without partiality. I done covered that. Without partiality and without hypocrisy. I've never seen as much hypocrisy in our everyday church as there is today. In, in our, our churches up and down the highway, I remember right here behind this pulpit, one that we done, uh, that done, we done everything that I know we could do to help them, and they turned around and stabbed us in the back. We done everything that we could to pull them out in their hard times when trouble hit at their home. When things was tore down and wasn't looking good at all. And the next thing they done, they stood behind this pulpit and tried to tear us down. Amen. That ain't godly. And I'm going to tell you, God's blessings ain't on it. Amen. And we'll pay for it somewhere along the line. He said that wisdom in the 15th is sensual and devilish. That wisdom is sensually and devilish. I, I thought, neighbors, glory to God, I thought about as long as the money is coming and we, the state people, are paying the money and these lawyers that the court has appointed, and surely we need a court-appointed lawyer would be in dictatorship, but they just keep putting it off and get another $75 and another $80 uh, for 30 minutes' work. Glory to God. It's abomination in the eyes of God what America has come to. 
We need justice, and the Word of God is justice. The Word of God is justice. We'll get justice, amen. We'll get death, but we're going to get justice too. And he said, partiality and without hypocrisy, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Let's go into the fourth thing. From whence cometh wars and fightings among you. Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? Where does our divisions come from? From the lust in our members. If it's jealousy, or we want to move up, or, or we're not happy with anything, you lust and have not. The Bible said we lust and we have not. We want everything, but we don't have. You kill and desire to have and can't, cannot obtain. This is America, church. Look at it. He said you fight and you war. Say amen right there, Larry. We fight and you war, yet you have not, because you ask not. And I thought about, why is America in the condition that we're in? If America that calls herself a God-fearing nation had a got down on their knees and prayed out, prayed through, I'm not talking about two minutes, I'm guilty. I'm not talking about three minutes or five minutes, amen, and put Mr. Trump up there so God could see him, amen, and see what we wanted, and we begin to pray, this thing wouldn't have run as close as it's run. So I'm telling you there's hypocrisy out there today. There's some will tell you they're for him and vote against him, amen. I was like that before I got saved. I remember taking a pint of liquor and voted right the opposite way from what the fella bought me the pint of liquor for. Amen. I remember that. But I was, I was a hypocrite. I was in hypocrisy. I was lying. But bless God, I'm saved today. I don't do that junk. But it's got to be happening today. We don't want God mentioned. We don't want to stand up for Israel. Amen. We don't want to walk for God. We don't want to stand up for the church. I need some more amens. Amen. If, if we'd have been where we should have been, glory to God, it wouldn't even been close. It wouldn't even been close. You can't tell me that a Christian nation can, can uh, uh, vote in uh, abortionist, abortionist over somebody that's trying to help Israel. They can't tell me that. We're not, we're not Christians. They can't tell me they're Christians, but they got a drinking habit they can't quit. It's a lie. We're living in hypocrisy today. I had an everyday drinking habit. Everyday drinking habit. But I got saved and God dried up the fountain. Amen. So there's some things I know, Bill. Ain't there some things you know, brother? There's some things I know that God can deliver you. So he said, Come ye not hence even of your own lust that you war, war in your members. You lust and have not, you kill and and desire to have and cannot obtain, you fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. I thought about what has Corona done to our church? Has it bought division? Has it bought war? I promise you from the depths of my heart, I've had to pray down hard feelings. I promise you I, I've had trouble understanding how we can call our self Christians and be where some are. I've had trouble. I've had trouble with some that's got up and left our church and went to another place and said they still believe the same way. Where are they at today? I've had a battle with this. There ain't no peace in it. There ain't no peace in it. When you jump up and your heart is deceived and you go in the wrong direction, there's a few things I know is right, glory to God, and serving God is right. Amen. Being on the firing line for the glory of God is all right. God's pleased with it, and he'll bless. But what we're doing, we're asking, we're asking amiss. Let me read what the Word says. Y'all have done heard this, I know. He said, ye ask, ye ask and receive not because you ask amiss, the third verse. That's just under your own lust. It's not God's will that ye may consume it upon your lust. So what is half of our prayers about? 
Think about it. Think about it. What is our prayers about? It's something to benefit us. It's something to take care of our natural needs in our life. It's something to keep me feeling good, keep me happy, keep me with no problems, keep me just full of joy. Just keep me full of joy, Lord. Keep me shouting and all the people shouting, the church pew is full. What's it all about? That's my prayer. Lord, my bills is paid, everything's took care of. That's my prayers. Who are they for? Oh, y'all ain't like me, are you? Who, who do we put up first? Us. Self. Who hurts first? Self. Who has to go through more than anybody else? Bless my heart. Self. Well, ain't nobody's eyes bad as mine. Emma tried to tell me hers bad, but they ain't bad as mine, boy. Lord, would you touch mine? Get hers next week. Come on, church. That's about where we're at. I'm kidding, Emma, honey. Your eyes is older than mine. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Amen. They're, uh, yeah. so, so we both got bad eyes. But can we pray as, as it was our own? Could we? Age is changing some things in my life. Not just my eyes and my hearing either, I can tell you that. But he said, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is an enmity with God? Enmity with God. Whosoever there will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Can I tell you something today, honey? We don't love we don't love God like we need to love God. We care more about ourselves than we do God. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you how it is. We got some, bless God, that won't come back to church because they think too much of self. Amen. They probably, I talked to some pastors this week. He said he had some members that probably never come back. Didn't have enough to fight the battle. Think about where we're at. He said, if we love, if we're a friend of the world, we're an enemy of God. There ain't nobody here, including me, I'll put me at the top of the list, that wants to be slurred and not be a friend and not be liked. But maybe you can't stand on the word of God and everybody like you. The Bible said, you adulterers, that's men, and you adulteresses. We've walked away from God. I, me, me, and I've been preaching it hard. But I never dreamed America was in bad a shape as they're in. I never dreamed America was as bad a shape as we're in. But how long have they been burning flags? And how long have they been marching? How long have they been taking prayer out of schools? How, about, how long have they been just keep a gouging to knock down God? And now they've come down to the church. You're the church. You're the one they're pecking on. I'm the one they're pecking on. If we're a friend of the world, we're an enemy of God. If the world loves you, said the world would love its own. If the world loves you, we're an enemy with God. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace, whereof he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. He resisteth the proud and gives grace to the humble. So we sing the amazing grace of God. How do we get the amazing grace of God? How do we keep the amazing grace of God? It's by being humble. I find that I was by far more humble when I was saved in 1968 than I am now. I didn't find no fault with no church. I couldn't find no fault with no people. Everything was just light. Everything was just day. Everything was bright. I was a brand new creature. 
as Satan come along and I led him into my mind and I began to find fault with preachers. And I began to find fault with the churches. And I began to feel a division. I don't know about you all, but I began to feel a division. And then I finally, I didn't fit in here and I didn't fit in there. You know what? It finally stopped your testimony in some places. Some places you went in and they didn't shout. You just felt plumb out of place if you hollered amen. So you just let it go. You just let it go. What are we doing? Rebelling against God. He said, and y'all done heard this, and I brought this out Sunday morning, but I couldn't get away from it. He said, submit yourself, therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We all know that. Submit yourself to God. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. That's plain English. If I draw nigh to God, he said, he'll come nigh to me. He said, for me to cleanse my hands, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Neighbor, today we're not established. We're double-minded. Today our mind's in different places. Today our mind is not totally on God. I thought as I come back from my altar today, my mind is having trouble staying on God. My mind is having trouble dodging what's happening in America. My mind is having trouble not, not to let fear come in with corona. My, my lustly, fleshly body don't want corona. So the natural man would go fight to do everything that I don't catch it. But the godly man will do what he can do to serve God and let God take care of it. Amen. Can I tell you, I can't handle corona. I can't, what, I can't handle what's happening in my family. I can't change it. I can't change no one of you all. But I can work on Bill. Amen. It's time that I give God Bill. It's time I to give myself to Bill. It's time I present my body a living sacrifice. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. I need to read two or three more and I'll quit. He said, be afflicted. I want you to get this. Ramsey, man, you don't like this. Hey, Ramsey. There he is. He said, be afflicted. I mean, you don't like that. And he said, mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Oh, my Lord and my God, church, do we have the burden for our land? Do we have the burden for our church? Do we have the burden for our people? Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to, to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves. You won't hear this preach where a preacher is trying to take up an offering on television. Where he's trying to sell you a bottle of healing water or a little hunk of land on the Amazon or something. Be afflicted and mourn and weep and let your laughter be turned to mourning. You know, most of us have laughed a little bit tonight. It's a joy to be in the house of the Lord. And it's a joy to realize how stupid I am and how great God is. It's a joy to know I can't make it without God. Amen. I thought in my lifetime that I could, but I can't make it without God. He's my heart breathe. If my arm lifts, it's God. If I breathe, it's God. Amen. If I dodge corona, it's God. It's nothing that I've done. It's God that's had his hand on us. I praise him for it. Let your joy be turned to heaviness, and I'll read 10 and quit. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. He shall lift you up. My message tonight was, if we're a friend of the world, we're an enemy with God. If we can't turn loose of the things of the world, My phone calls is lightened up, but I almost still get a phone call a day. Some of it I can pick through as hypocrisy. 
some of it, Sunday, I can pick through that it's real. And I see some of it that's just asking a miss. It's just what I can get. Almost weekly, somebody calls wanting something from a church, wanting some money, wanting this and wanting that. They'll promise you their left arm and put a stake on it and never do nothing. That's where we're at today. The church ain't to be used. Beat down. It's a place for us to come together and, and draw strength to fight the battle tomorrow. I don't know what about you all, but I got needs in my life. I got things, and I'm serious. I don't even know how I'm going to handle them tomorrow. I don't know which way to go with them. I ain't got a lawyer, and if I did have, I wouldn't pay him. Just got to trust in God. The altar's open. If you ain't got a need whatsoever, just if you're able, come pray for me. We, I'm a little bit selfish tonight. I need your prayers. Got some health problems, and spiritual problems. And hallelujahs in here. Father, Father. Father, in the holy name of Jesus, God, we come before you tonight. God, you know every need in my life. God, you know exactly where I stand. You know what I thought today. You know what I thought this week. You know the direction that I've went. God, I like to pray, and I like to have some joy, and I like to have some fun. Lord, I'm telling you, it's time. I believe that I need to get down to some morning, God. I let my joy be turned to heaviness. God, I believe I need to weep some tears. I believe I need I to mourn just a little bit more, God, for our nation and God, for my, my brothers and my sisters that's in trouble, God, and uh, the sickness that's all about us, and God, our people that are afraid, our people that are thrown in the towel, and God, God our people, Lord, uh, that don't have their hearts and their minds stayed upon you, God, I believe today, Lord, is our error that I need to come back for a little while, uh, God, and just mourn and to weep, God, uh, for the nation that we live in, God, for our churches, uh, uh, all around about us, God, the doors are shut. Lord, we hear of another uh, almost every day, God, about another church door shut and about another pastor giving up, about another sick in the hospital where Corona is eating up. God, I ask you today, God, help us to be strong, help us to be bold. And God, in whatever state I'm found in, God, help me to be content, Lord, to praise you, give you honor. I'm glory, God, my heart's serious tonight, God, that I want to walk for you, I want to stand for you to have me to stand, God, I want to be what you would have me to be, God, all these that have lost loved ones and lost wives and husbands and moms and dads, and God, all these that are just ready to cross over, God, and some we missed you this week, God, I ask you to touch them, God, in a mighty way, Lord, I thank you for the help you've given me, God, you know the need for my eyes, God, you know the need in Emma's eyes, God. I pray, God, you'd give us what we need, Lord, that we can continue on, God, for thy glory, God, that we can give you praise and honor, God, uh, no matter what condition we get in, God, again, I pray for Trump, Lord, God, that you would just touch him, help him not to concede, help him not to back down, help him not to give up, God, our uh, Lord, to help us to stand and fight the man, God, our uh, Lord, to keep a God-fearing man, Lord, uh, uh, in the White House, God, I pray, God, that we've not got in such a shape, Lord, uh, uh, that this man can come in, Lord, with abortion on his mind. Uh, uh, we don't need no more sin in the White House, God. We need a cleansing. Uh, uh, we need our hands washed, God, of the junk that's going on in our land today, God. We need to stand up. The churches need to stand up. Uh, we need to pull back together, not bow down, not run, not give up, not back down, God. I ask you to touch, God, our church, that one that's weakest of that, that one, God, that's got doubt in their mind, that God, that one that don't understand, Lord. And I know everybody's not got to the age of the point we're at tonight, God. Uh, but this thing is serious, Lord, and we need to be about our Father's business. I don't need to be playing games. I don't need to back down off the word, God. I need to stand where you'd have me to stand. I love you. I appreciate you. I thank you for what you've done for us, God. Touch that one nearest eternity. God, if there's one in need tonight, sit here. God, if there's one lost, God, save that soul. God, help us to prepare to meet our God. Thank you again for loving in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus.
Glory be unto God. Praise ye, holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Anything else on anybody's heart? They are clear. Oh, Tanya, beginning Sunday, I better be in praying anything to give her next wife to not be a nurse. She rode him around two, two days with a twisted gut. <laughs> He's doing good now. Fire. Still having, Still having trouble eating. Pray for Ben. Pray for Ben. Tanya is sick now. She's sick. Yeah. That's yeah, right. Pray, pray for Tony. I picked at her. She said he was up there with a big truck and a trailer, four-wheeler. He fell and got all twisted up and couldn't drive out. And she said, I know I couldn't. Thank God for our working people. Again, I thank God for our military. Nothing else. What do we decide? I believe we decided not to have a Christmas service. Is that what we decided? Yeah. Do I'll turn if I may. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Stan, Todd, or you just missed.